So let's talk about recording audio into Logic. This is one of the most basic fundamentals that you need to know if you're going to be recording music and producing it inside Logic. Sure, you can do almost everything with MIDI and instruments, but the minute you want to record vocals or a guitar track or a piano, any of those things require an actual audio input and the knowledge of how to record audio. So let's start with some of the basics of this. First thing you need is some kind of microphone and an interface. Those two things happen outside of Logic. Of course, you need the cables that go with them, but really those two elements really set the tone for everything you do with the audio recording. You want a decent microphone, something that's low noise, that's appropriate for the type of instrument you're recording, and you need an interface which has a preamp and an analog to digital converter. Now, honestly, most interfaces are gonna have all of what you need, but it's really gonna depend on the price point of what kind of quality you get. There aren't really many excellent ones that are very cheap, and there aren't many really bad ones that are expensive. Overgeneralization, I know, but that's a good, simple rule for this. And no matter what you do, you can't really compensate for a bad input signal chain later on in Logic. We can do some things to cover things up, but you really want to have the best quality you can from the outset. So once you have that microphone connected into an interface and that interface attached to your computer, you may need to install some drivers so that the software works with it. That's going to depend a lot on the manufacturer of the hardware. So let's take a look now, though, what we have to do inside Logic. So in Logic, in our preferences, we need to actually choose the appropriate interface. So right here, the input device that I'm using is this SE USB microphone. Now, I'm not going to be able to change it right now because that's actually what I'm talking to you with. But this is where we would set the input to whichever device we have connected. This is also where the first piece of troubleshooting may have to happen. So if you have it connected and you don't see it here, then you're gonna to need to go to the interface's website, figure out if anyone else is having a similar problem and get advice on how to connect it properly. Once you have this set up, the input correct, then we need to make sure we have a few other settings also working to help you create the best recording possible. One of those is the IO buffer size right here. If we have this set to 1024, that means there's gonna be a delay between when you make a sound and then when you hear it in your headphones or other monitoring system. That delay, or what we call latency, needs to be as low as possible without infringing on your quality. So we may want to record at 128. If your interfaces allow you to do 64 or 32 without having any degradation, then do those. The lower it is, the better. As you begin mixing, adding effects, really doing more with your project, you'll increase the buffer size so the computer has more power in the mix phase. But for recording, we want to keep it as low as possible. We're going to talk a little bit more about that later on because we do have situations where we have a full project and we want to record into that. So there are some things that happen in that area too, but let's get back to that a little bit later on. Now we do have another tab here called recording and this is by default set to where it should be most of the time, but we can choose our file type for this. AFE is perfectly fine, but we do want 24-bit recording, which gives us a higher quality than if we were to deselect this and just get 16-bit. So make sure that those are correct. And then we have some preferences here for how or what happens when we have the cycle on and off for this. Because we do want to be able to use the take folders, which are such an important part of recording inside Logic. Okay, let's close this for a minute. Now let's look at the individual tracks, because that's the next step. Now in this little startup of a project, I've got what are called scratch vocals. That means they were recorded, but they're not intended to be the final one. So I'm going to show you the next step in actually recording one of these for real. Let's listen just so you can hear what we're dealing with. Across the street is upside down Driving on into the 
storm, this isn't what I signed up for So make it loud and listen proud and turn it louder than before I never knew what I would find, I had a different place in mind I saw the end Okay, so you can hear that while they're not horrible, there's definitely some rough edges to them and so what we want to do is create a new track. I'm going to show you how to record into it. So we can do this a number of different ways. One of them is by going to the menu and saying new audio track. And you can see it got created up near the most recent selection. So I'm going to drag it down to the bottom. And we're going to do just to keep this straight new box just like that. Now, we have a number of different buttons. You can actually see some signal coming in right now. But we have these two buttons, the record enable and the input monitoring. Now, my actual microphone that I'm using right now actually has built-in monitoring, so I can hear what's going through that, through the headphones. But if I push the eye, then you'll also hear software monitoring through the actual software, so you could hear a double. So, so let's, let's turn, turn it on, on for a second. second and turn it back off because it's actually really hard to talk with two different versions of your voice coming through. If we want to record into this track, make sure we record enable the track and then we can push record. Check, check, check. I go outside, across the crown, it's and so you can see the there's audio the now being recorded the into the track. So that was me talking. Let's solo this out and push play. You can hear the headphones. And so you can see there's audio now being recorded into the track. Okay, so that's as simple as it is for a recording. Record enable, push record on your transport, and then it will start recording into the track. Now there's a few tips with this that are gonna make it a lot better in the long run. Number one, naming your track because you can see the file that was recorded adopted the same naming convention as I did with the track. If I just left it the default, then we're gonna have a bunch of files that I don't know what they're called later on. You can see all of these have that Vox right here, except for the very top one, which is called Instrument One, and I didn't give it a name before I recorded into it. But what happens, let's get back to the latency thing for a second. What happens when I have a project? This is not a big project, but I have a number of things in here. And so how do I make sure that I'm getting the lowest latency in the recording process? Because any kind of latency starts to really distract the singer or the other instrumentalists. And so you wanna have it as low as possible so that they can't tell that it's there. One option is to come up and actually turn on our low latency mode. So let's go into our preferences for a second. I'll show you where this is because there are a few different places where we really need to focus on this. One of them is right here. We have low latency mode down near the bottom and we can set what that limit is. That means that if we turn this on and set a limit, it will never go past that amount. It's even easier if we come out here and customize our control bar and add in the low latency mode option from here. So that way we can just click on it from the, the top of the screen instead of going into preferences. Now it will actually limit the latency while we're recording. And I don't know if it will do that in this project because we don't have that much, but in some projects that are bigger, it will actually deactivate some of the plugins so that it won't be able to go past that. It will typically deactivate the sends on the record enabled tracks. You can see it's orange right now. That means that it's determining that that's adding some latency in here. And if we really wanna do something with this, then we might have to actually override it. So right in here, you'll see low latency safe. Turn that on and it will reactivate that bus Let's take it off for now. So that's just another little quirk of this. Now, last thing to talk about, and let's go back out here to the main window and let's unsolo that and mute it. You'll see that the wave shapes are different size here. And that's because this one was recorded a little louder 
and these a little softer. You really do want to make sure on the input signal chain that they're at the right level for the content. So you maximize how loud they are without clipping or going over. That way you get the best signal to noise ratio and you get a nice thick signal here that's great for processing and you don't have to boost it or change the gain inside Logic. That'll help the overall quality. Last two things to think about. One of them is using effects on the actual input. So for instance, if we want to record a vocal, we put pitch correction, an EQ and a compressor like we have on this channel, then the actual signal will go through those and the person singing would hear it through those if you're doing the software monitoring. If you're going through some kind of interface and monitoring off of that instead of logic, then you wouldn't hear those. So doing the software monitoring with this is actually the way to go if you want to hear it with the effects on it. Last but not least for this video, we want to talk about the tempo because if you're going to record without a tempo in Logic, then you're really going to lose a lot of the functionality that makes Logic great. However, we do have the ability now to conform whatever input recording we make to Logic's tempo. So up here at the top, we can actually choose between some different options. We can keep, which means we keep the project tempo as it's set. We can adapt it, which means that whatever we record will then change the tempo to that. So if you want to play guitar without a click track, then Logic will automatically adapt what the whole project is to that input signal. And so that's really, really nice option here. And going a little bit further, the Smart Tempo Project settings, this allows us to set the same thing we did above there, but then down below, the defaults for Flex and Follow Region settings. So set new recordings to on, on align bars, on align bars, and beats. So that means it's going to auto flex time, shift things so that it matches the tempo, and then set imported audio files to on, on align bars, and on align bars and beats. That's going to, again, analyze it, and it's going to automatically move it in to match the tempo. So just a few different options with that. And of course, there's a little bit more information here about this feature inside the actual menu. So that's recording into Logic. There's a lot more nuance as you begin to record and get things to fit inside your project and actually produce different recordings to match and be really polished and edited and mixed inside the project. All of that happens after the initial recording. So you wanna make sure that the recording is the best it can possibly be. Okay, that's it for recording. Obviously there's so much more to it, but I think that this will get you started with one of the most important elements of any project.